All right, in this video today, we are going to go over the raise degree command. Raise degree is basically, it's similar to a deform inside a uh, regular poly modeling program. But basically, raise degree, what it does is it adds additional CVs or control vertices to a surface. So all these objects in the scene here uh, derive from simple primitives. So this guy here, he was he came from a he came from a plane and then got twirled around. This one was a cylinder. Uh, this one was a sphere. This one over here was a box. And then this one back here was a torus. Okay, and then I did some cuts and stuff like that on there. So, but basically you can add um, a little more organic feel to your CAD work inside plasticity. And today I'm going to go over it with you. So let's go ahead. We want to start simple. So let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and get to the regular and turn off perspective and turn the grid back on. I'm going to go ahead and hide these guys for now. Uh, we want to start simple. So I'm going to just draw out, get a basic plane going here. Okay, so I got a rectangle out. I'm going to go ahead and patch it. I've got it uh, hot keyed to my tilde key. So now we created a basic, a basic uh, plane. Okay, no extra, you know, dimensionality to it. Just a flat plane. So we're going to add some dimensionality to it by doing raise degree. So what you want to do is select the object and select a surface. Okay, so I got him selected. The easiest way to raise degree is do shift S. Let me turn off overlays. And as you can see in the corners, it dropped a CV onto each corner. Okay, so what can I do with those CVs? Let's go to point selection. And we'll do G and move these two points over here. It's like, okay, I can raise it up and down. Big whoop de doo Okay, so nothing too fancy, huh? All right, so let's go ahead and manipulate just one corner. Let's take a look at what happens. As you can see, there is now a nice smooth transition between each of the CVs. So, okay, now what? So you can keep on going here. Let's go ahead and select that face again. We'll do another Shift S. Now we've got uh, five additional points to play with. So I can take say like this point here, oh, I'll go back to point selection. That point there, I can move him around however I want in 3D space, and we'll get a smooth transition between all the joined CVs. All right, so move him around, manipulate him. Oh, okay. So you can kind of see what's going on here. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna back up a bit. I'm going to go back to a plain Jane plane again. Okay. So we got just our flat plane again. There's another way you can go about this. There is the rebuild surface, which is this little hammer down here. And you can click rebuild. Boom. Okay. It's already put CVs in there for you. Okay. With uh, plasticity 2024.2, there is now an explicit control that you can click on. Now you can manipulate even even better. And it's not just a, a general um, subdivision of all the degrees. So now I can manipulate that. As you can see, I'm adding it just on one, one dimension there, the U and V coordinates, okay? So it goes all the way up to nine. And then same thing with the other one. It goes all the way up to nine. Okay, or you could drop it all the way down. So let's drop him down to three. Yeah, three is fine. Right click to execute. I'm gonna grab these guys, grab these guys, G, move them up, and there you go. You can even scale, and you can bring them in. I got my snap on here. All right. So, and that's basically how I did the twirl pattern. So let's go, I'll show you how I did that. So just shift S, shift S. Okay. 
I got all the points I need for this. So point selection, rotate, we'll rotate around that one guy. Hold down control. Gotta get the right degree there. There we go. And there, rotate. And we'll rotate the opposite direction. 90 degrees. And there you go. Got your little twirl in there. I can select the two ends here. We're going to make a quick little bow tie scale. I can scale them out. Cool. A little twirl. All right, cool. All right, so that's the simple. All right, that's the simple one here. Now, if you want to, all right, five, get everything selected here. Now, these, when you got a lot of surfaces with a lot of these uh, raised degree commands on there, you're going to get a lot of CVs floating out in the world. Well, you can select per face and do a toggle points. Okay, I got mine set up to my bracket key. So let's go find it in here. Just type in toggle and then toggle points right there. Okay, like I said, I got it hotkey to my bracket there so I could just turn it on and off turn it back on turn it off oops there we go okay cool all right so let's go ahead and just get rid of him we're gonna delete forgetting my commands uh turn that back on so I know where I'm going we can do a center box here he's pretty pretty uh self-explanatory here uh, we'll do shift tab, we'll do 40, tab 40. Perfect cube. Okay, cool. So let's go control three. It selects all the faces. Because like I said, this is a per face command, per surface command. So there's six faces on here. So we, we're going to do it. We're going to do uh, raise degree six times here. Okay, cool. All right. So I want to select, oh, let's get the point selection on there. I think. Oh, yeah, I don't want the edges. All right, so that. That. that there we go. And we do a scale. Or we could scale out. We could balloon them out. It don't matter. We'll scale them in. Now let's just select the corners here. Yep, just got the corners. We we'll scale out. There you go. And now you can uh, toggle the points on and off per object, but you can also, let me control Z that, you can also do per face. So just, just so you know, so if you toggle the object, you can do all at the same time. If you toggle just a face, you can do turn it off just per face. So I'm going to do control two and then we'll, There we go, and that's how I made that cool little uh, star box thingy, whatever. All right, we're going to go ahead and delete him. Now, we're going to move on to the tough objects, okay? And the reason I say they're tough, or not really tough, they're just uh, a little more complex. So this is how I made my little crown. And I just uh, deleted the top and bottom there. It was just easier to manipulate it. So if I select the face, okay, and if I do a shift S, you can see you got this kind of this weird patterning around here. It's because there was already CVs built in to the mesh, okay, because it was a curved surface. So it has to have CVs to control the, the angle or the degrees. So there is another way you can go about this. Okay, you can do the rebuild command. So what I do with these curved surfaces, what is, I'll subdivide it once and then do a rebuild on it. 
Okay. Now, Control Z. Let me go back out. Now, if I did just a straight up rebuild, it doesn't seem to put it where I want it. Notice how it doesn't put it on the top two poles here. But if I do a Shift S first and then do a rebuild, it distributes it a lot cleaner, at least in my opinion. So now I can manipulate manipulate things a lot easier. So now I go point selection, grab maybe. I'm just grabbing every other top point here. Though actually I'm grabbing all of them, but all I have to do is just deselect them. And then I could do a G and move it up. Okay, now I can grab these guys, G, move them down. Okay, so now what I want to do, I want to point out something interesting with um, whenever you rebuild a surface, the origin point gets lost. Okay, and I'll show you here. So let's do, let me grab just this guy for now. No. Maybe I can see if I can grab that. There we go. Gee, I'm going to move them down just a hair. Okay. Like I said, see how it lost the, the origin? Okay. And that always seems to happen with rebuild surfaces. For some reason, the origin pops off to the left or the right or whatever. So when you do, say, like a scale command, you have to reset your origin. Okay, so I put it back on the origin. He's down low, so what I'm going to have to do is turn my snap on and then just uh, manipulate two directions. Okay, now you can see I put that in there, and that's basically the start of how I made the crown. Uh, then I thickened it up, and then so on and so forth, and added the details to it. But that's basically the gist of that shape. So let us go ahead and delete that. And I'll show you the sphere next. Sphere, same sort of problem or complexity to it. If you do just a Shift S on there, you can see how much uh, control points you have. You really want fewer control points to manipulate the object. So. Since I subdivided it once, go ahead and hit Rebuild. There you go. So now it's nice and organized again. So I'm going to go Point Selection again. Always forgot to execute the command. There we go. And now I'll select these guys. And see, I hit Scale again, and the origin's lost. So what I have to do is do a V, find the origin, the origin of the scene. And now I can do my manipulation. And we turn snap off there. Okay. And then scale down. And there you go. Whoops. Oh, yeah. I need to have that on. <laughs> Duh. Scale V. Let's go find the origin. Okay. Yep. Okay, cool. I got him. Now I could just do this here. I'm going to turn snap off. Cool. So now if I wanted, I could select this guy here. And instead of uh, scaling, I could actually move him. And so you can see what happens here. So you can get some kind of cool, interesting shapes by manipulating the CVs of a surface. So possibilities are kind of endless, but you know, I haven't found myself really using this a whole lot, at least right now. But that was basically it for raised degree. Uh, if you guys have any thoughts of how you could apply this in your workflow inside plasticity, let me know in the comments. I'm kind of curious on to see how everyone else is using it. So, but that's basically it for today, guys. 
uh, we'll catch you in the next video, okay?